Hello everyone, Crepo and Officio here. We are at one of the many, many Christmas many, markets many, many. here in Berlin. We are getting ready for our Christmas special where we take a look back at the 2016 year focusing on just Europe. Yeah, we'll start with spring, head into summer and then go into worlds. We'll be joined by a couple of guests and Trevor's dropping by as well. Yeah, so sit back guys, get a drink, get some snacks and enjoy the show. Welcome inside to our lovely Christmas lounge where we even stole my mom's Christmas tree just to make sure it looks really good for you guys. And this is actually located in Quickshot's basement and that's where we're shooting from right now. We're going to talk about 2016, we're going to talk about Europe because we had some cool things happening. Yeah, in this pristine location we just want to bring you guys the roundup of 2016 but we got to start Spring Split, we got to start at the beginning and that was a whole heap of roster changes because after Worlds we did so well in 2015 but immediately we lost Fnatic. We lost Fnatic, obviously, Huni, Ray Nova, Yellowstar, they all went to North America and made us question, you know, the level coming into this split, but we got some new super teams, yep. obviously, H2K, Vitality, we had the H2K lineup that actually went to Worlds later, doing really well in that spring split, so we had some good teams. Yeah, a lot of hype for Vitality as well, super team coming in. To contrast that, we had some new kids on the block, Spice came in, they need a little bit of time to get running, but G2, they went off immediately, mostly due to uh, perks and trick up there in the jungle, Really good combination, so that was exciting to watch for sure. Definitely, and they showed us a lot of cool highlights. We actually gathered some other really awesome highlights for you guys. So just take a look at the spring split and then we'll talk more about it after. Yeah, the old guys, Fnatic and Origin, they decided to suddenly start playing because we obviously had that quarterfinal between Fnatic and Vitality where we thought and the viewers honestly thought that Vitality were favorites to win that one. Fnatic though, took them down three to one. That was a pretty good series. The other one was the Stomp Origin Unicorns, just a quick 3-0 and we move on to semifinals. Yeah, but the semifinals, what a bunch Ooh. of hype we had leading into those matchups. I was so excited to be part of that show. We had Origin versus H2K in a nail-biting fight game finish. Honestly, super surprised that Origin came out because yeah. H2K, they had everything. It was their year. They were supposed to take it all, but suddenly at the end, Origin still made it to the final. We all thought Yankos would just outplay Amazing and like win everything for H2K. That was the slow one though, because the other one, G2 Fnatic, was like the old guys who'd won all the LCS titles in Fnatic against the new kids on the block, G2. I remember specifically being like, I want G2 to be really good in best of fives because they were so good in best of ones. Yep. I want to see this fast paced League of Legends pay off. And it did. Three to one against Fnatic. They outplayed them in pick and ban phase and in game. And especially Trick and Perks together, rookie of the split and MVP. And they just continued showing up in the final. Beautiful from start to finish, honestly, from G2 Esports. They dominated the final and then they went onwards to... Summer, summer split? Summer split, straight to summer split. Yeah, Nothing yeah. else happened in between. Uh, just one more thing, spring split. I love the usage of ZZ Rot. What was your take on it? Uh, I remember when it was built the first time, I thought people were trolling, but it actually turned out to be really good up in the top lane. I just don't know that much about it still. That's the problem. Yeah, actually, I don't know too much about it either, but uh, for that exact reason, we have a local ZZ Rot expert in the house former color caster, even greater play-by-play, -play, really messy hairdo, it is right quick shot. Welcome to the Quick Shop. I'm your host, Quick Shot. Do you find it difficult to trim a minion wave? Is it challenging to sculpt the perfect push? Or is it hard to defend a side lane? If you've answered yes to any of those questions, I have the perfect item for you. It's called the ZZ Rot Portal. For a small combine cost of 780 gold, you get armor, you get magic resist, you even get HP base regen. And because I'm such a nice guy, I'm even gonna throw in the option to get movement speed when you move towards a tower. 
Now it does get better because there's also an active portion. If you use the hotkey, you can place down a void gate. This void gate unlocks the abyss and an unlimited amount of voidlings. Voidlings will push and control and shove and get rid of enemy minions from any lane that you choose. But, 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 that's not even the best part. Any of the gold that those voidlings earn pays back to you. That's right, the ZZ Rot pays for itself. There isn't a better item on the rift. Now, because I am such a nice guy, I'm gonna sweeten the deal even more. If you feel that the slot efficiency isn't good enough for you, I'll buy the item back and you get to keep the gate. The army, the void, the abyss, the pushing, it all belongs to you. Raptor and Negatron cloak not included, late game sold separately. Up, up. No! This is for Mr. Chachi, man. I'm not used to turning this way. Crepo, I have to be honest. Your skating is as bad as your casting. So I say we think back to warmer times, we think back to some big plays. Let's take a look at the summer split. There are nine weeks of heated competition here in Europe. Overall, European splits should be stronger right now. Pretty excited to see what these LCS teams bring out. And what do you expect? <laughs> you can't afford to lose anything. Hey, take down the former Kings! Are you ready, Poland? But this has actually gotten incredibly bloody here. They are one step closer to Worlds! The Unicorns are starting to win this fight. They have what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with G2. Put your hands together for your Summer Split finalists. They are your Summer Split champions. Welcome back, guys. We're joined here by Sheepy from the Unicorns of Love. Before we go into the summer split, do the unicorns have an important Danish Christmas tree? Danish? Where did you get this one from? It was my mom's, and we actually stole it. Can the unicorns match up with that? Man, it's a pretty sweet tree, so Quickshot takes this one. Quickshot wins, that's good, that's good. Let's get into business, you know, let's talk about summer split. Roster changes happened again. Ton of them, the most we've ever seen in the EU LCS. Yellowstar came back, Knight came in for Giants, Sven and Mithy obviously for G2. Overall, I think there's a lot of cool changes, but also a lot of surprises. For me, the biggest one was like Splice Giants. Uh, Mickey X, just one player in, and suddenly this team looks phenomenal. Uh, Giants always like handed as a not so great team, suddenly really, really strong. And you know, 2016 was kind of in the summer split up and down and like really weird. Not really sure what happened there. It also showed us a valuable lesson in not actually judging a book by its cover. Uh, Martin, the Unicorns of Love. Yeah. We questioned oh, yeah. the roster. We questioned the Aswa split push, but in the end, we were right. We were in wrong. The start. We were correct <laughs> in the start when we saw the roster. And I think actually think we criticized quite a lot of the roster changes from some of these teams because there were so many question marks. And I do think the overall level in the EU LCS. It wasn't really good enough in the summer split compared to some of the other splits we've seen because we had like Fnatic Origin kind of dropping down. Yes, new teams came in, but they did increase the overall level. They just they just got better individually. Yeah, it was really weird. Uh, I actually thought that the teams were stronger because the, the roster pickup seems so good. Like for us, I, I think we were like the only team that had like this new talent, like this weird players where you Praise were like- yourself for the scouting. Yeah, uh, that worked out well in the end. Um, but for example, Fnatic with Yellowstar going in, you thought would be extremely strong. Rocket picking up uh, the Koreans and also picking up uh, Steerbeck. Mm -hmm. Stronger ADC. Like, you thought Rocket would be really strong, but all didn't work out so well. In the end, fizzled out. Rocket even, you know, in the end for the yeah. relegations. <laughs> that was pretty bad. And then we had another <laughs> massive uh, kind of shake-up once the regular laning phase came back 100% because lane stones got removed with the patch and that made playoffs much more exciting as well for a change of pace and I think the viewers really enjoyed it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, we also had some really good semi-finals especially like the H2K versus Splice five games, NAR five games, you know, crazy thing where Poly for some reason didn't change the pick and ban phase and you guys sadly didn't make it to the final but you, you got to play like a lot of games, you got top four and Gauntlet, 
Almost. Oh yeah, it was really close. I mean, Almost. after three against Fnatic, the dream, you know, that we would go to Worlds finally. We're getting finally. scared. Are we sending unicorns of love to Worlds? Like, yeah. oh, hang on, hang on. Hey, we're, we're not uh, we're not that bad at this point. <laughs> we're actually pretty strong. And then 2-2 yes, two, two against Splice, and in the end it doesn't work out. It was it was really, you know, devastating. Well, it was close. It was. Yeah, not enough. I mean, there was a smite here and there. You guys almost made it. And we got to see this whole, like, reward almost about like friendship and sticking together and like, keeping these players together for such a long time because that's always what you guys talk so much about you know with the unicorns of love and one really amazing thing to follow and that's exactly why we invited somebody to the studio today who is deserving of more praise for what he does for the unicorns he keeps the team cohesion alive manages the happiness of the team and honestly is an inspiration and then we're obviously talking about Roma. Roma, welcome to the show merry christmas grandpa i'm really happy to be here thank you darling Roma, you took off the hat right now. We know you in the costumes, without the shirt, with the unicorn outfit. But who is Roma actually? So my name is Roma Bijar. I'm 28 years old. I'm French, as you can notice with mm -hmm. my accent. I have a master degree in business, allowing me to be the manager for Team Unicorns of Love. If you have to sum up in four or five points, what does a manager do? So I had kind of to invent, invent my own job uh, because there is no school to become a manager for an eSport team. I uh, identified four of them. The first one is money, getting sponsors into the team. Second one is more about uh, communication, social media and stuff like this. The third one is Riot, all the administrative papers and contract. And the last one is the best, the most fancy uh, to me, is to take care of the players. Make sure they smile on daily basis, they're happy to play and that's how they perform. So now we've established that you do much more work than an actual coach does as a manager. What is your one goal for the Unicorns? If you can do one thing, achieve one goal of next year that makes you happy as a manager, what will it be? So obviously, um, we're gonna win Worlds. Uh, that's, the main, that's the main objective. Um, for that, my job is gonna be to make sure the players are happy on a daily basis. Because a happy player is a performing player, and once they're on stage and they like being there, we're gonna win. I like that philosophy. Thanks. Hopefully we can get certain casters in our team a little to smile well. a little bit more. I like And the best way to get happy is to give gifts to other people. Yes. And on that note, we have some gifts for you guys. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Martin, bring him out. Yeah, because it is Christmas. We got the sheepy one here. We'll, we'll send that, that one over. over. And you get this one. Uh, we were too lazy to wrap them. And yes, yours is lighter because we ran out of money. So we just had to kind of nice. <laughs> go over something cheap. Very nice, guys. Very nice. Food for a week. Thank you so much for joining us. And now, guys, we are going to move away from the Summer Split and the Unicorns of Love, guys, because they obviously didn't make Worlds. Instead, though, we're going to focus on the teams who did. And here, we're going to check out some of the highlights from the World Championships. You did, no doubt about it. 3 0 sweep of Europe's H2K. SK Telecom have overcome every challenge. They are the undisputed best team in the world. Welcome back guys, we just saw some of the really cool highlights from the World Championships and a lot of ups and downs for Europe. One of the big ups was H2K and that's why Vanda, you're here now joining us because you actually earned this spot on the couch unlike G2 and Splice. Well, it's, uh, it means a lot to me to be here with you and uh, yeah, we, I think we exceeded a lot of expectations uh, during Worlds. So I like G2 and Splice, so I'm very happy we, we managed there to do There you go, kick them when they're down. I like yeah. that. Good Hopefully, th the fact that they can end up here on this couch could be a great motivator, because they need we hope. It. Both G2 and Splice were disappointing. Splice, yes, they were in the group with Dev. Yes, they weren't projected to make it out, but there were still key errors, especially in the late game, something we weren't expecting of them, because we were praising them all the time for the late game. Yeah, we were, and, and G2 obviously came in as the number one seed from Europe, one spring split, one summer split. MSI kind of happened, and then sadly for them, now Worlds also kind of happened. 
And it feels to me like they're just not performing on stage when it really matters. Communication breaks down and then they just get punished. They played so good in scrims all the time. They had a great uh, season. But uh, I don't know, like in the international tournaments, they can't, they can't, uh, they can't uh, I don't know, like mess up together or yeah. respond correctly to other players. Like maybe they're not used to some play styles. I, I don't really know, but they, 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 they are playing good, but it just doesn't, doesn't show up sometimes. And that seems to be something you in particular for yourself have fixed as well, the translation yeah. from scrims to stage, because you got to play in Poland, you got to play World's uh, semi-finals in Madison Square Garden. How did that feel for you to actually finally make that career progression? Yeah, like me and Jankos tried so for so long to come to Worlds and we finally did, so it uh, means a lot to us. I think first week uh, and during Worlds we were kind of stressed and to this new environment and we uh, were like used to it, I think, and we kind of collapsed against HQ EDG, but we redeemed ourselves second week. And then semi-finals, Madison Square Garden, big stage, such a big crowd, it was just awesome. Yeah, fun fact, the only European team who won a game in the first week was you guys against INTZ. So you became the European hope <laughs> just by winning one game. Everyone else lost there everything. There was Albus Knox as well. Are you okay, Albus Knox, very Second true. Second European hope. Second yeah. European hope obviously joined you. You got to play them in the quarterfinal. You guys 3-0 with them. Honestly, it was very, very one-sided. What made you guys so much better now than the other European teams? Because you made it all the way to top four. Well, I think we just could transition what we were practicing to the real games and we had good uh, ideas in picks and bounds. Maybe not in semi-finals, <laughs> but uh, I think in, against EDG, like burning uh, Alistair Tomkrench was like uh, good for us. And then we kind of made them made them play not their game because they had to like help top lane a lot since Odo Amne was just uh, outperforming mouse, like a little mouse uh, on the top lane. So yeah, I, I think we, we, we just had a good tournament. You guys fell short at the very end. Um, yeah. Couldn't make it to the finals, which means, sadly, no trophy. Uh, we still disappointed, by the way. But Same. we have something for you instead, because there is no trophy for you. Instead, we have a consolidated gift here. What could it be? Brought to you by Martin and I. Yeah. Honestly, much better. The Faker doesn't get this. No Korean player has this, mm -hmm. but you will. And hopefully, it can kind of soften the blow of not making it. Yeah, you got a few things in common now. You've never won EULCS. Faker's never won EULCS uh. <laughs> either. And like, that's a good thing, right? Better than the uh, World's Trophy. I yeah. agree. The hat is great. And, you know, we went out this morning. We bought all this nice stuff With just for you. With our own money. Our own money, oh, of course. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Vanna, for joining us. Super happy you wanted to be here and talk about Worlds. Thanks for having me. No problem. And that means we're uh, nearing to a close right now. We had a great talk about spring, summer, world, some great guests. Vander at the end here. We just said, Vander, really good to finally have a proper support on the couch as well. No offense to you, Crepo, of course. And also, we had Quickshot. Yeah, finally good to have a world. great co-caster in this show. You mean a great play-by-play -play caster? Yeah, I agree on that one too. And before we go, Mitch, before we go, I went out. It was cold, it was early, and I bought you something because I really, really, really care about you. So, I got you this uh, little present here. Well, as a matter of fact, before I get the present handed over, Martin, I've actually been hiding something the entire show for you. You've been sitting on it. Thanks. Equal exchange? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's very warm as well. You can open it, I'm uh, gonna open mine. Uh, let's, see, let's see what you got for me. Man, you have great taste. <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> <this is> actually awful. <laughs> anyway, awful, guys, this is awful. <laughs> this is actually, this is just straight up awful. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed 2016, and we hope to see you in 2017. So, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.